A short first flying phase from feet to hands makes it difficult to create an effective second flying phase from hands to feet. Short undercut first flying phases cause the hands to touch the floor with poor body angles to make a quick arms repulsion into a powerful turnover to the feet. Before bad technical habits get too ingrained, it is wise to spend time reviewing basic drills like this one and many others. Coaches must train their eyes to catch all kinds of big and small mistakes. Deep squats slow down and diminish the explosive power to begin the back handsprings. Though there are slight personal differences in general, the bend in the knees must not even reach a 90 degree angle. Deep squats and undercuts together weaken the back handspring immensely. Serious basic drill reviews must be a priority. Notice that there is not a second flying phase due to the lack of the blocking and arms repulsion. On the next few clips, a different gymnast offers examples of some of the basic back handspring mistakes already mentioned. An undercut with poor blocking repulsion and pike turnover. A much longer and nice back handspring example with good hands to feet turnover. Second flying phase example with an incorrect pike turnover. Much better hollow body turnover. Deep squat with very poor blocking and arms repulsion. Deep squat slow down and weaken the jumping power. Though it looks somewhat better, still the power damaging mistakes must be addressed and corrected. Deep squat and undercut. A much better slight bent knees power jump and a longer handspring. Another undercut example. Deep squat and no arms block or quick repulsion. The body is too far past the vertical to block off the floor with effective arms repulsion and hollow turnover. Check this much better second flying face turnover. Some beginner gymnasts tend to tuck their back handspring first flying face from feet to hands. In cases like this, they need to return to perform back handsprings with a spot and train some drills where they experience the full extension of the knees when jumping or rebounding off the floor, plus the tight arch position required during the back handspring first flying phase. Swinging both arms tilted to one side and twisting the body on that direction as if the gymnasts were trying to look over their shoulder to see where their body is going instead of keeping it square is another common back handspring mistake. Barrel back handsprings may help the gymnasts to work out the problem, emphasizing to feel their backs landing on the barrel square and without turning the head sideways. Also training back handspring setups with a spot can help to solve the problem. Double bouncing forward to begin the back handspring does not add any significant power. It complicates the skill and detracts the gymnast's mind from focusing on the correct body motions to accomplish the skill. In this slow motion replay, notice several other mistakes such as elbows bent when the arms swing and when the hands touch the floor. And of course there was no blocking and arms repulsion. Coaches must always search for and apply a variety of drills to enrich the gymnast's learning process, increase their growing body awareness, and their skills execution mastery.